host, Romy Bean, and the coach of the CU Buffs, Deion Sanders. Offered all, cuts it back, met at the line of scrimmage, didn't get there. Viola, here comes a safety blitz, gets rid of it, almost intercepted, then caught, and a touchdown run here, Johnson. Shadour drops, looks left, throws it on out there, diving down Western, the end zone, oh, he held on. The Buffs' three-game win streak over Nebraska is over. Matt Rule and the Nebraska knockoff coach prime in the bubble is 28-10. We're going to be down the pressure. Not just the pressure of, I'm not saying them rushing the pass, but the pressure of the game, the pressure of the moment, the pressure of the time. You know, everybody want to be him until it's time to be him. We got to be able to handle that pressure. Welcome into Coach Prime's Playbook here in beautiful Boulder, Colorado. Sitting down with Coach, always a pleasure. And Coach, that was, I think, a really poignant Hold statement. on, let's see, I hear it. Hold on. What? I think that's the fight song. Did you hear that? Yeah, did you hear that? Or did we tell him not to play it? I don't know. I think that was perfect timing to play the fight song. <laughs> That's good. That's good. How stupid is that? Ladies and gentlemen, we, sometimes you just got to laugh at the foolishness of it all. How stupid is that? Do you ever get tired of it, though? No, you know what? When, it, when it's about me, like no. they're attacking me, I'm good. Yeah. But when you're attacking the kids, and especially my sons, mm -hmm. I have a problem because now my father hat comes on, and the kids on the team are like my sons as well. So my father, yeah. my covering... Come on, like, come on now. Talk, you can talk about me all you want, but stop, stop, yeah. stop. But well, you can only protect them so much from yeah. that. How, how do you see them dealing with all of it? They're good. It's, it's never stops. I mean, they're good. It, it, like, two things. Mata has, like, Mata wanted uh, Daddy Yankee, little gasolina, like, when he kicks. So, you know, they play that. It, yeah. And that's, that's hilarious. It's funny. Even walking out last week, it's not proper for kids to leave during the play. Mm -hmm. So you wait till TV timeout, mm -hmm. then Chidozi and Shador is running out, but all you hear is the Shador left during the game. Mm -hmm. Like, you gotta stop. Mm -hmm. But it should be accountability in what we do mm -hmm. as reporters. What I'm saying, we, because I was in that business for 20 years, so I kind of know how it mm -hmm. rolls. I know who authorizes the foolishness mm -hmm. to go come out publicly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I agree more. We gotta be accountable, for sure. I ain't no accountability no more. Everybody with a mic is a reporter now, mm -hmm. an analyst. That's the truth. That's the truth. Uh, can we skip over to the game talk? Let's go. Okay, let's go. So I thought it was an interesting statement you said there. You know, everybody want to be him until it's time. They right. got to handle the pressure. It feels like this team was built on handling the bright lights and they, the pressure they, in the moment. They can. They can. It's in them. Just got to pull it out of them. Like it's 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 in them. It, it really is. And I, I, sometimes you can't explain what transpired. You're like mm -hmm. I know you could handle that. Mm -hmm. I know you're built for that. I know you don't crumble under pressure. And and some things happen, you're like, what was that? Mm -hmm. But we will do better. So you talked about, and we saw it on social, about persevering, about how you respond yeah. to adversity. Yeah. How do you want to see this team respond? This well, way? I think the defense responded tremendously in the second half. Offense did some pretty um, decent things. We got to be able, everybody, you know, we got to run the ball successfully yeah. to have more of a balanced attack. That's what Shador was saying uh, in his presser after the game, and they cut the question out, but they just put the answer and the response down. So you got to have balance to be able to form this game. Sometimes you could just overwhelm someone like we did in the first game and you throw for a billion yards and you could still get it done. Yeah. But to really go the distance, you got to have a little more balance, even if it's 60-40. It's just got to be some. Let's talk about the defense who, as it kind of seems like each game, as the game goes on, they get better they get and better. They get stronger and stronger. Who's standing out to you? In, in, uh, well, Cam. Game? Cam is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, Chidozi has been consistent as well. Mm -hmm. I believe both corners are holding their own and doing their thing. We get some some heat, some pressure inside from up front because uh, second half they stop the runs like 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 no other. Bentley, uh, those guys are doing a phenomenal job. I'm, I'm proud of them. I really am. I really am because they're not giving up or giving in. Mm -hmm. They're fighting to the end. When we talk about establishing the run, and I know every week you say we want to establish the run, look, you, you've forgotten more about football than I'll ever know. Why is it so hard, has it been so hard to establish the it's run? It's an attitude. It's a straight attitude up front. You, you got to want to um, run. You got to be committed to that, not as a team, but just as a line, as a the thought process, like, mm -hmm. we can do this. Yeah. We got this. Like, when it's third and one, uh, when I was a cowboy, the line used to look over to the sideline and, like, run the darn ball. Run the football. Yeah. And you want to see that. You want to see that. You don't want them to be complacent mm -hmm. or to sit back and 
they choose to throw the football instead of mm -hmm. want to run the ball. You got to want to see that. But uh, that all starts in practice. Yeah. If you don't see it in practice, you're not going to see it in the game. Yeah. Well, then moving on to the offensive line, I feel like one thing with the offensive line, it's like it's like five fingers that got to move as a you fist. Gotta, like you you, got you need so much cohesion. But you can't expedite that when yeah. you got a lot of new guys. Yeah, is but, there a way to uh, yeah, speed it up? Yeah, it, it is. And I heard something that was crazy. They said, we got to stop shopping in the portal. Seeding is, is yeah. yeah. Hank is was here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tyler Brown came with us. Mm -hmm. So you only have two guys from the portal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. So don't say it's because the guys came from. No, no, no. That's just how it is. You. Um, you just got to execute. You got to want to whoop that guy in front of you on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. And we always say, don't leave this game and say it. Uh, we want you to say it wasn't, my, it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, if we lose, it wasn't my, about me. Make sure you do your job so it's not about you. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's a, lot, that's a lot to chew on. We're going to take a break. I'm going to yeah. chew on that. And when we come back, we're going to get to know one of those stars of the defense. You already mentioned him. That certainly put the nation on notice. We'll sit down with Cameron Silman Craig after this. Now runs to his right, whips it down the side. And it is picked off. Picked off by Colorado's Cameron Silman Craig. Forget all the social media and all that, man. Uh, football. At the end of the day, I love football more than I love them. Instagram, I love football more, I love this money. I love football more than I love these girls, bro. I love football first. And that's how we got to get to. We got to love this football first. Welcome back into Coach Prime's Playbook. And, man, what a treat this week. We got Cameron Silman Craig, mm -hmm. a leader on and off the field. But you heard that really impassioned speech. Where does that come from, all that passion? I'm just how I was raised, um, playing football. I mean, it was always a want factor. I mean, I, we played football for free, I and mean, that's when we had our most fun playing. Mm -hmm. So that's why I just try to keep that mentality, mm -hmm. just going out there and have fun and don't worry about everything. Else. You know how long we've been together? How long? Tell them how long we've been together. Six years. Yeah? Six years. Yeah. He was a junior in high school. What do you like about Coach Prime? Why do you want to stick with him all those just, years? Just the, um, just the passion he um, brings out of you. I mean, he always holds you accountable. He never lets you get too high, never lets you get too low. Make sure that you keep pushing yourself every day. And um, that's the biggest thing I love about him, that he never get, let us get complacent. Other way around. What you love about Cam? Cam is a dog, man. Like, he, he, he's a leader and a dog. Usually you have either or, mm -hmm. but he's both. Mm -hmm. um, I know one of the questions after the game was like, who said something in the locker room? I said, I'm not looking for people who say something in the locker room after the game. I'm looking for people who say something during the game. Mm -hmm. Those are the leaders and the dogs, yeah. the ones that, that take control during the game. And you can see what he did out there. He, that, that's who he is. I mean, you don't have to give him no rah-rah speech to have him go. When he start putting that uniform on, when he snapped at him, and it's go time. It's on. And you know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. The more guys on the offense and defense that you know what you're going to get, you're going to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, and it shows on the field. I mean, 11 tackles in the Nebraska game. Three, was it three or four? Three. Three for loss. Uh, and you kind of said after the game, you feel like the unit, you know, kind of keeps getting better as the game goes on. Where do you feel like your strengths are right now? My strengths, we, we just working to get better everywhere. I mean, yeah. Honestly, um, up front, up front got to get better. DBs got to get better. Lombards got to get better. Um, just being with this man, I never can just harp on mm -hmm. what, what something that we just do great. I mean, I just feel like we just got to get better yeah. everywhere. Let's talk about this upcoming matchup. You had a great game against CSU last year. At the mm -hmm. time, it was a season-high nine tackles, but mm -hmm. you already got 11 in the yeah. last game. You had a pick. Uh, how much are you looking forward now to playing them, but this time on their turf? Um, it was awesome. Um, the game last year was an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a real fight with those guys, and um, it's going to be a great rivalry game. We, we come to dominate this time. I mean, we don't want to leave it close. We want to just go in there, handle our business, and come back. What makes a rivalry game special for you? Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's the hate. It's yeah. the hate. We don't um, hate anybody yeah. personally, but no. we've learned to uh, adopt mm -hmm. the rivalries here. Mm -hmm. So we are do adopting what was told to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, I like say it. better myself? <laughs> yeah. Well said. Well, one of the great things about this program is you got these amazing mentors coming in and out. You got a chance to pick the brain of one of the greatest to do it at your position in right. Ed Reed. Mm -hmm. What was that conversation like? I, what would what, you talk to him about? Um, honestly, last game, that's what I um, went back to what he was telling me. He told me, well, when everything going on around you, you just got to keep a calm head. Mm -hmm. I mean, if ever you got to keep a calm head for the front line, for the linebacker. So this um, weekend, I just tried to go out there and make sure I stayed in the game and kept everybody calm. And we just came out there and just kept doing what we had to do. So um, I thought about it a lot. Roman, it's valuable because when you're off 
and you're on the sideline, yeah. you got to still be in the game, mm -hmm. even though you're out of the game. But you got to still analyze and visualize what just transpired, what they're trying to do, because you're about to get back up in six, several plays mm -hmm. to go back out there and correct whatever they're going to try to target. Mm -hmm. And a lot of guys get lost on the sideline, mm -hmm. looking around and, and just in la-la land, and you go out there and they're coming at you, and you're not prepared mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. Well, this is this this has been amazing because Cam, man, I feel I feel the energy. You got me running, wanted to run through a brick wall for you. It's so <laughs> fun. Can't wait to see what you do on Saturday. Um, Thank you so much for joining uh, us today. Well, we got to take a break, but up next we're going to take a deeper dive into this rivalry week with Colorado and Colorado State. We'll be right back. Rams going tempo. Fowler Nicolosi keeps it himself for the touchdown. Airing it out as a man caught. Touchdown! This will be returnable. Horton at the 30. Watch out. Horton straight up the middle. There he goes. Torrey bound for glory. Welcome back into Coach Prime's Playbook. Time now for Who's Next. We know who's next. It's Rivalry Week 2.0, back-to-back. Let's take a look at the Colorado State Rams. They are 1-1 one one this season, fresh off a win over UNC. CU leads the series big time, 68-22-2. Buffs have won the last six. But this one's interesting because this is the first time the game is in Fort Collins since 1996. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, let's hear from head coach Jay Norvell, who uh, maybe ignited the rivalry a little bit last year with some comments, but playing it down this year. There's been a lot of bad blood, I mean, over the years in this game. and, and um, But, you know, rivalries are what make college football special. Um, and really, it's an insignificant. You know, the things that happen that surround the game really – don't affect the game. It's what happens on the field that matters. So he says the things outside of it are insignificant. Do you do you agree? I don't I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. What is he? I think he's talking about like the fans and there's well, been years. The fans working. can't be insignificant because they wouldn't yeah. pay your salaries. I mean, yeah. How are they insignificant? I mean, <laughs> we're, trust me, our fans are not insignificant. Yes. I got love for our fans. Yeah. I got love for our fan base all over the country, not just here in Boulder. Mm -hmm. When we talk about Buffs fans and the Buffs in general, for years this game has always kind of been, it meant more to the Rams th than the Buffs in well, the sense of if the, Ra the Rams got to win this one. So they, they come out, we know they're going to come out hot, heated the way last year ended. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that your guys want it that much too? Well, we don't take anything for granted. We've, we've, I may find clips on... Um, the net or some motivational like in the morning to just get them going because we practice early in the morning and you want to get those guys going um, emotionally and psychologically and just feed their brains. Um, when they get out on the practice field, they're going to do what they got to do. We know that. But you want to give them something to think about mm -hmm. um, and entice them to just go to the extra mile. So you guys just came back from Nebraska, where that was a wild environment. Right. Now, Canvas Stadium, it's going to be intense. It's going to be heated there, too. Maybe, maybe it totally different levels, but still, what yeah. are you expecting from that environment? Well, it's going to be sold out. I think everywhere we go is a sellout, right? Yeah. So it's going to be sold out. Um, they're going to want to get out to a great start. You can't get out to a bad start at home, us or them. Mm -hmm. And they want to capitalize on some of the things we didn't do well. Mm -hmm. But we got to counter that. Mm -hmm. Both of us have studied a tremendous amount of film to this mm -hmm. point, and we're going to continue. But we got to, our playmakers got to make plays, and we got to be, we got to win the physicality game, mm -hmm. and we can't be penalized as much as we were last mm -hmm. week. First week, we were wonderful penalty wise. Last week, we were totally undisciplined. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Uh, All American receiver Tory Horton, his mm -hmm. availability is, they're not sure, but how does that affect whether he will or won't play? Uh, how does that affect your game? Plan? First of all, the kid is phenomenal. Yeah. I like the way he plays the game, I like the way he approaches the game, and he's a pro because he gives you something at receiver as well as special teams. Mm -hmm. Um, I like our corners. Yeah. I really like what they bring to the table. and They want the matchup. Mm -hmm. Like, they want the smoke. They like that. Um, it's a better game. I want them to come with everything they got mm -hmm. because we are. Yeah. You talk about your corners and, and safety, and, of course, it makes me think of Shiloh. Which, yeah. Now, you said it'd be kind of a quick recovery, but, but I'm curious, when he went down, yeah. as a father, did you have that thought that maybe this is the last time well, I coach him? I'm so wrapped up into the game, I don't really know. Yeah. Um, what's going on with that? I was, remember he was standing up talking with the dog. I was like, get over there on the bench. Coach is calling you on the headphones. He need to tell you something about last series. He's like, I'm not, something's wrong with my arm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, get your butt over there. Did <laughs> Once they told me what happened, and I, we walked down the sideline during the timeout, and we 
talked about it, that we talked about the serious nature mm -hmm. of it. And my father, Cap, came on, yeah. you know, to comfort him and let him know I still believe in him and he's mm -hmm. going to finish the season phenomenally. But mm -hmm. this is just a setback to have a setup mm -hmm. to be phenomenal. Yeah. So then he had uh, surgery on Sunday and uh, being there uh, was hilarious in the hospital, especially when he's highly medicated. Yeah. I can't. I can't say some of the stuff he said. It wasn't <laughs> profane, but it was just hilarious. Right. That's who Shallow is. Oh, man, I wish we could see that. Well, uh, but we wish him a speedy recovery. We're glad it's yes. not a season-ending injury. Yeah. we got to take a break. On the other side, you did something really cool in Nebraska that I don't think a lot of people saw, but we caught it. We'll take a look at that when we come back. Amen. Welcome back into Coach Prime's Playbook. Time now for the final whistle. Now, we were talking about the Nebraska game. And uh, before the game, our photojournalist, Dave Willie, caught a really, really cool moment. There's a little Nebraska fan mm -hmm. who was really excited to see you, obviously. We're going to roll this tape, I think. Here we go. Uh, you called him onto the field, gave him your hat, even though he's in a Riola jersey, and then his reaction is just absolutely priceless. He's so happy. It's so awesome. What a cool moment. But you see a Nebraska fan. Why, why, why do you want to do that? He's a kid. Yeah. First of all, he was taught to be a Nebraska fan. <laughs> you, he was trained to be a Nebraska mm -hmm. fan. But as I'm jogging around, getting loose and getting my cardio in before the game and walking around as well, you can see that they may have on a different color jersey, mm -hmm. but they came for us. Yeah. So I just wanted to bless the young man. I got a million hats, you know, that they bring for me as well. So I always try my best to bless somebody, make somebody smile before the game. Well, that was a really cool moment, and yeah. I'm so glad that, that Dave caught it because, yeah. as you said, there's a lot awesome of the bad Dave. out there, but i awesome show Dave. you the good. Coach Prime, always an honor, always a privilege. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you in Fort Collins. Hold on. You hear that? That's the fight song again. There, we're going to have to change our <laughs> outro music, aren't we? <laughs> you gotta have fun with ignorance. You, you gotta, gotta, have, you gotta fun. have fun. Guys, we will see you in four colors.